Hello and thank you for joining. So Sony has just announced the anticipated, the highly anticipated 10th anniversary of the Alpha brand, Sony Alpha 9 III, the third generation of the A9, the ultimate, or let me just call it the leading sports and wildlife photography and videography today in Alpha 9 III camera. Let's talk about it a little bit. Of course, I was not invited to New York because I am here in Dubai. It's a big hassle to go there. And <laughs> Sony, for the first time, has not let anybody see the camera before the event itself, not send it to any of the large YouTubers, the large channels. They invited everybody to the event and everybody saw the camera together. And I salute Sony for doing this because this is a disruptive camera and this is something new, uh, something different, something that is changing once again the um, uh, face of the imaging industry, the digital imaging industry. So uh, we were not there, but we, I watched the launch. I took some notes and I will tell you all about it and my impressions on it as an Alpha One user. As we say on our Arabic channel, Tabona. So Sony Alpha 9 III, the third generation of the a9, the formidable A9, the pride and the, the, the jewel on the crown of the Sony lineup. Of course, that was before the Alpha 1 came, the Alpha being the, Alpha 1 being the ultimate camera. But for wildlife photography, for sports photography, A9 has always dominated the uh, industry until recently when Canon released the R3 and Nikon released the Z9. So there was competition. But today I'm afraid that this competition should uh, <laughs> beware, should um, uh, count a lot count too many numbers before releasing the next camera because Sony is setting the bar so high. Mainly because of three features. The global shutter, the 120 frames per second in photography in 24 megapixels, and finally with the pre-capture feature that allows you to capture one minute, one second, sorry, not one minute, before you press the shutter button, which means no more missing the takeoff of birds when you are doing birding. This is something very important. Let's talk details. So first of all, we have the A9 III in a body similar to the A9 II. Uh, many speculations were that it will be a big body similar to the R3 or the Z9. It's not. Sony is firmly behind its small body design, but it is providing the grip. Unfortunately, the grip is a new grip, so we cannot use the uh, Alpha one grip with it. So if I am to sell my Alpha One to buy this camera, I'm going to have to sell the grip as well and buy a grip as well for the new camera. That's that, that's a bit of a hassle, but that's not a big deal. Um, so the body is similar to the A9, not very similar. There's a C5 button, and that's something that we'll talk about in just a little bit. But nothing major changed in the body. We have the new dial for uh, photo, uh, video, and SNQ. This is a new since the A7 IV. And, um, there are some bells and whistles here and there. The grip is a little bit better in ergonomics. Um, certain things that changed, but the general feel of the camera seems to have remained the same for the A9 series. Uh, but the sensor is quite different. It is 24 megapixel, 24.6 megapixel to be exact, but it is a new sensor and it is a global shutter sensor for the first time in a full frame camera. The first time in the history of full frame cameras, we have a global shutter um, sensor. What does global shutter mean? Um, I mean, everybody on YouTube explained it since yesterday and everybody knows that global shutter, everybody knows by now, I assume that the global shutter means that the sensor is reading out simultaneously from every pixel out of the 24 million pixels that are present on that sensor. Every pixel is sending the signal immediately together in one go to the um, uh, processor, which means no more rolling shutter. Rolling shutter means line by line, and it gave rise to the rolling shutter phenomenon that we know, especially with electronic shutters. So no more rolling shutter, it's a global shutter, which means no more need for mechanical shutter either, because mechanical shutters remained because of the phenomenon of the bending straight lines in the rolling shutter. So there's, that's not a risk anymore. Uh, because of the global shutter. And this camera, as we can expect, does not have a mechanical shutter. It has an electronic shutter. And with this electronic shutter, it can burst crazy 120 pictures 
per second, 120 frames per second in photography in 24 megapixel. I mean, the Z9 did the 120, but it was eight megapixels, reduced to eight megapixels JPEG. Now we have 120, I'm not sure if it's JPEG or RAW, I assume it is JPEG because it's a very, very high frame rate, but 120 JPEGs per second is a lot. It's quite a lot. So because it is a lot, you don't want to keep it on all the time, but sometimes you're like shooting and suddenly something happens in front of you. A cheetah is trying to kill a gazelle or a bird is flying or something like this and you now suddenly need the 120. What what has Sony done to, to make it easier for you? They added the C5 and with the C5 you can just press it and burst and with this press, it's a very simple press, you will shoot 120 frames per second. And it will display it apparently, I haven't tested, I mean the camera is not here yet, but apparently it will display it as a video and then you choose the frames from that video. It's much better because we, if you shoot three seconds, you, you have like 360 pictures and this is a large number. So you preview as a video and you choose the frames from that video. So the sensor is very fast. The uh, processor is very fast as well. It's the Bions XR, the one that we saw on the Alpha one. There are two. One of them is the actual processor. The second one is the AI chip. The AI chip does the miraculous autofocus that I have tested uh, on the A7R5. That was the first time it appeared. And then it appeared on smaller cameras, the ZVE1. I have that camera. It's absolutely amazing. And the one that is filming me right now, the A6700, the small crop sensor camera, it has this. Trust me, when I went to Masai Mara last time, took beautiful pictures, but when it came to photo, uh, to autofocus in photo, uh, and in video as well, uh, for that matter. The A6700 was beating the Alpha 1 because of the new AI chip. So now I can't imagine, okay, this is like a $2,000 camera beating the Alpha 1, the formidable Alpha 1 in autofocus because of the AI chip. Now I can't imagine a 6000 A93, what would it do with this AI chip? I suppose it will be a blazing fast, very accurate and very sticky. I'll test it when the camera comes here. The RAW files actually are 14-bit, which is amazing. Um, you can shoot up to 129 frames before the buffer buffers out. Um, some more features we have. Okay, I mentioned the, the, the um, pre-capture, have I? The pre-capture means you capture one second before you press the button, and that's just amazing. But it's amazing double because it is pre-capture with autofocus. And this feature will uh, will change the lives of bird photographers in particular because you always miss the takeoff of the bird because of the delay between what you see and what you your muscle reaction to press. This delay is no longer important because it pre-captures one second before. One second at 20 frames per second the, what you would do for birding means 20 pictures before even you press the shutter button, which is amazing. They will get the takeoff, the exact takeoff um, uh, picture, which is like mind blowing. Uh, so this happens with autofocus and the 120 uh, pictures per second also happen with full capability of the autofocus, which means, I mean, there's no limitation to what you can do with this camera. The shutter speed is also insane. The shutter speed is one over 80 thousand of a second. So 80 thousandths of a second. This is this is crazy. This is, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. <laughs> this will turn day into night. Um, the tricky part is when you have such high speed in, in shutter, which will be like mind blowing again in, in wildlife photography and sports photography. So if you, when you have this, you worry about the flash sync, but don't because up to one over 16,000, you're having with burst shooting, continuous shooting, you're having full sync with flash without even, I mean, you don't have to worry about high speed sync HSS or anything. Now this camera is syncing with the flash all the way up to one over 16,000 of a second. This is, this is crazy. This is mind blowing. Of course, I have the, the autofocus chart in front of me. We, we now know what Sony can offer in autofocus. Now we're looking for speed boost, looking for more stickiness, for better performance. But in terms of options, we have humans, animals, birds, animal and bird together, animal and bird with priority to animal, animal and bird with a priority to bird, insects, cars, trains, and airplanes, which is like amazing. Uh, again, the, the, the performance of the autofocus, even on this small camera, was amazing because of the AI chip, so I can't wait to test it on the A93. 
autofocus works down to minus five EV. This is amazing. Uh, eight stops of stabilization, in body image stabilization, eight stops now. I need to test that to see how, how accurate Sony is in, in, uh, in uh, portraying this, uh, this effectiveness. But eight stops is fantastic, even if you don't have a stabilized uh, lens. But if you have a stabilized lens, this will double and this will give you stabilization that is crazy. Uh, when it comes to video, we have uh, 4K 60 oversampled from 6K, which means high quality. 4K 24, 25, 30 also oversampled from 6K. 4K 122 pixel bin, not oversampled, but with no crop whatsoever, so you get the full frame, but it is not uh, oversampled. I don't suppose it will be bad. Let's test it. 16-bit raw output from HDMI. Amazing. Of course, we have a Cinetone S Log 3, all the picture profiles, uh, dynamic active mode and stabilization, the screen that we saw in uh, the A7R5. So it is, we always ask ourselves, is it better to be tilt or is it better to be flip out? It is flip out and tilt at the same time. So you can tilt it, flip it out, turn it, do whatever you want with it. It's a crazy screen. We saw it in the A7R5 and it did amazing job. The LCD is 3.2 inch, of course. Um, uh, 2000, uh, okay, a little bit less than 2100 dots. I think this is just great. Uh, the viewfinder though, that's 9.44 million dot, amazing. OLED EVF, uh, it, the, the good thing is that you won't lose resolution when you raise the refresh rate to 120, which means you'll get the, the full capability of the um, uh, viewfinder at the same time in resolution and refresh rate. There's a new vertical grip. I wish it was the same old Alpha One, so I don't have to sell it and buy a new one, but that's all right, that's a minor nuance. Uh, and of course, it is dust and moist resistance. The price is a blazing high $6,000, uh, which is far from the two, uh, the $4,000 uh, usually, uh, price uh, mark usually set for uh, Alpha 9 series. But of course, we can understand why with all this new technology. I just, I'm just scared to think the Alpha One Mark to how much Sony will charge for that. If, we, if we're getting the 6,000, which is the Alpha 1 price, if we're getting the 6,000 for the A93, when we get the Alpha 9 Mark II, it's gonna be, I think, very painful in price. Uh, two important points with this camera, Sony released the 300 2.8, the anticipated camera. I don't know why it is anticipated. Quite frankly, for me, I want a 400 prime and I want a 200, uh, 200, 600 zoom, even if it is not a G Master. But a G Master that is 300, I, it is absolutely fantastic for many sports, but it is not versatile enough, in my opinion. The other thing that I want to talk about is that we'll finally get some updates to the Alpha One and the A7 S3. Uh, come February, I suppose, uh, March, March 2024. But it doesn't seem that it's gonna be very significant so far. The Alpha One, they said breathing compensation, a welcome update, of course, and relay playback. They didn't say anything about improvements to the autofocus or anything like that. A7S3, the same breathing compensation. And instead of the relay playback, we'll get DCI 4K 24P. That's great, of course, very important for a camera of this caliber, but at the same time, we will still be missing some important features. That's all. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this very quick and brief overview of the camera was helpful for you. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our video. Help us grow uh, to the same level that we, we are in our Arabic channel. And our Arabic channel is linked below as well if you speak the language. Thank you very much again, and see you in the next video. And cut.